I am Gail Locke McDowell, author of Cracking the Coding Interview. Today we're going to talk about Quick Sort. Quick Sort is a really popular sorting algorithm and also a very efficient one. So the way Quick Sort works is we take this array of, in this case, we'll just deal with integers, and we pick some element to be the pivot element. For now, we'll just assume we're going to pick the pivot element ran randomly. And what we do is we walk through the array and we swap elements around such that all elements less than the pivot come before all elements bigger than it. And that creates some sort of natural division in the array. And then we repeat this process and we apply this algorithm to the left portion and the right portion. And then we do that over and over again and eventually our array just becomes sorted. Let's drill into this in a little bit more detail now. We'll pick a pivot element randomly, let's say it's seven. Then what we'll do is we'll walk through the array from both sides, left to right and right to left swapping elements if they're out of order. Out of order meaning means that every element less than seven should be before every element greater than seven. So first we have six and 15. Six is smaller than seven and 15 is bigger than seven, so those should be swapped. Then we move this left pointer until we find an element that should be on the other side. And we do the same thing for the right. Okay, now nine and one, so those should be swapped as well. Pick one over here, nine over there, okay. Now again, move the left pointer until we have an element that should be swapped. Move the right pointer, okay, two and eight, so those should be swapped. Okay, now we have a arrangement such that everything smaller than the pivot is on one side and everything bigger than the pivot is on the other side. So now we just do quick sort on these two halves. And on the left side, we pick a pin pivot el element randomly. Let's say it's three. So then we walk through and move things smaller than three to on one side and things bigger than three on the other side. So we have this left pointer and this right pointer again. So we move the left pointer over until we have something that should be on the other side of three and move the right pointer over until we find elements to be swapped. So two is smaller than three and six is bigger than three. So we wanna swap those elements. Now move the left pointer over until it has something that should be swapped. And we're good actually. Okay, so now again, we apply a quick sort on each side. Okay, so if we do a quick sort on this very leftmost part now, we'll pick a pivot element randomly again. Let's suppose it's two. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the left pointer over here, the right pointer over here swap these elements around until we have elements that should be moved. So move these pointer over. So this left pointer will get moved over here. Three should be on the right side and one should be on the left side. So we're gonna swap those elements. And now we're actually done with this part. Then we wanna apply quick sort to each of those, those parts. So as you can see, this is getting progressively more and more sorted. And when you do this enough times, eventually we will wind up with a sorted array. So now the next question is, how efficient is this sorting algorithm? Well, in an ideal world in quick sort, we're dividing the array in half each time. We pick a great pivot that really is roughly the median, and then half the elements get pivoted to one side of the array, half of them get pivoted to the other, and then we just apply quick sort to each half. In that case, we get an n log n runtime. One quick and dirty way of seeing why this is n log n in the good case is that each element is in gets quick sort called on it log n times. And each one of those is one swap. So if there's n elements and they go through log n swaps, then it'll take n log n time overall. However, in the bad case, let's imagine what happens here. We pick a really bad pivot. Like every time we pick the pivot element, it happens to be the very first element in the array or the very lowest element in that subarray. Then we actually have n squared calls to quick sort, and therefore our runtime degenerates to O of n squared. But as long as we're smart about how we pick the pivot element, we can get, get a pretty efficient runtime, and that's why we typically implement quick sort in the real world. So now that you've seen how quick sort works at a high level, let's turn to the implementation. We'll implement quick sort recursively. So we're gonna give ourselves this kind of overall method, initial method that we call, that goes and then calls the recursive method with the correct values. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to do a quick bounds check. So if 
left is, or if it's greater than or equal to right, then there's nothing to do. So just return. Okay, now I'm going to, what I want to do is I'm going to pick a pivot element first. So I'm going to pick pivot to be right in the center there, but there's other ways you can do it. So pick it to be the center. Then I'm going to want to partition my array around this pivot. So call partition, the left side, the right side, and this pivot value. And now partition is actually going to return the partition point. So return that dividing point between the left and the right side. And so I'm going to call that index. And then once I have that, I want to sort on the left and the right side. So call quick sort of left and the left side. And then quick sort on the right side of that. And that's our basic framework. So now we just need to implement partition. Okay, so to implement quick, uh, to implement partition now, I need to take in a, I need to return an integer, which is going to be that partition divider point, and it's going to take in the array, take in the left, take in and the right side, and then this pivot value. And then what it's going to do is it's going to move starting from the left side and the right side simultaneously. So move these pointers in towards each other. So while left is less than or equal to right. Now I want to move left until I find an element out of order. So the idea here is look for an element on the left part that is bigger than the pivot because then it should be on the right side and do the same thing on the right side. So while these elements are in the right place, so while ray, dot left, ray of left is less than the pivot, keep moving left. So this will break when I get an element that should be on the right side. And then do the same thing on the right side. So while array of right is greater than the pivot, move that one inwards. Then if left is less than right, so if it's less than or equal to right, then swap those elements. So swap array, uh, swap, swap the elements of those two indexes and move left and right over. Now when we get to the very end of this while loop, the elements will be in the right order, or the elements will all be in the, in the right order. So you'll have elements smaller than the pivot before all elements bigger than the pivot. Then we need to return the partition point. So we need to return that essentially dividing point between the left and the right side. And that is gonna be where left is. So that will give us the partition point. So that's how quick sort works. So let's walk through this again. So we call this recursively. The left and the right side are, if these indexes are out of order, then we just return, there's nothing to do. So then I pick the pivot, I partition these elements around the pivot, and then I sort each side. And then let's look at how partition works again. So I start from the left and right side, moving these pointers towards each other. I move the left pointer first until I get an element that is smaller, is bigger than the pivot, because that should be on the right side. Then I move the right pointers until I get an element that is smaller than the pivot, because that should be on the left side. And then I swap these values and move these indices. Then at the very end, left will be at that partition point, so I just return that. Now, of course, in the real world, we generally wouldn't implement a sorting algorithm from scratch, but it's still useful to understand exactly how they work. So now that you've seen the implementation, why don't you try applying a sorting algorithm to another problem? Good luck.